Hey everyone, welcome to the latest edition of MSP Business School. Here today is myself, of course, Brian Doyle, and with me I have, as always, Tim McNeil and Rob Rogers joining me. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. How about you? I'm doing very well. Uh, dude, I'm digging the hat. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Today's casual day. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, casual, casual Friday today. at MSP that is a, <laughs> That's a smooth criminal. And for those that watch the video, <laughs> you might see next Friday, it'll be casual too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, I am actually subscribing to one of Rob's favorite things to tell us about the Dream 250 today. Okay. Today, I saw that uh, I had blocked out time for strategic planning, something every CEO should do in their business at least once a month, in my opinion, to sit down mm -hmm. and kind of organize yourself. And I decided to double leg it and said this morning, I'm going to build my Dream 250 because it's time for us to really know who we want to account base market to and for me to get the team to be able to help support those efforts as well. And in my 250 as a vendor, I'm looking at partnerships in our community guys, guys like we are vendors that mm -hmm. uh, you know we can make uh, you know some shared marketing with. And then I'm of course looking at end user customers guys. So you know seriously, if, if you're not taking a moment to be strategic about yourself, who's going to do it? And if That's you're right. looking at how yeah, you're going to exactly. grow your business and taking some time to do that, who's going to do it? And the reality is, if you ask most CEOs how many hours they spend on strategy each week, and I'm talking about small business CEOs, you'll find out it's less than 10% of their work week. Yeah. It's not oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh. I would say 10% is a stretch. It's, for it's being very kind. <laughs> yeah. I, like we're oh. just getting pulled in different directions all the time. Yeah. No. So, no. so right. Rob, I'm doing my dream 250, bro. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good. Next, I'm going to get you to do the empathy map, and then yeah. you're going to be all squared away. Look, I am an empathetic cat. I'm worried about Timmy right now today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But anyhow, with that being said, I think today's topic is going to be a good one. You know, we were having a conversation just before we kicked off today about uh, kind of the marketplace and what it's like looking for candidates, especially in sales mm -hmm. here in the MSP community. But I think a lot of customers would say the same thing's happening in the engineering side of life as well, Definitely. where there's just not as many heads as there are seats, right? And more importantly, are those heads empty heads? That's another question that's really <laughs> yeah. coming up quickly. So Today's episode is really going to focus in on recruiting. You know, obviously, Rob and Tim, that is your firm specialty from a sales perspective. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> without making it an infomercial, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what should the MSP community be taking into account when looking to recruit, when looking to hire? And maybe we'll talk a little bit about when it's time to fire today, too. Okay. So... <sighs> The recruiting right now is is about as crazy as we've ever seen, just flat out. Uh, prior to prior to me being in coming into the MSP space in 09, uh, I was actually a recruiter for about four years or just under four years. So I, I kind of had a sense of how it works and and what to do. It's part of the reason why we built in the recruiting aspect to to our service as a whole. Uh, what we're finding right now on the sales side, at least. Um, the, the biggest thing that the MSP owner needs is they, they need to have an open mind and they need to be, in, in my opinion, uh, they need to have an open mind and they need to be open to the hybrid role and or fully remote. And I'm, look, I'm the first person to, to sit here and say pre-COVID, I would have said, if you're a salesperson, you have to be in the office five days a week. It's the way it is. Take it or leave it. Um, my opinion's changed on that. I do th still think that salespeople should be in the office. I think if you hire a salesperson, they should be local to your community. Uh, if for no other reason, then they can be a, a full cycle or full outside rep or, you know, take those appointments right to close. Um, but there's, you've got to go in as an MSP owner, understanding that the game has changed significantly, even in the last six months, the salaries that we're seeing, have absolutely skyrocketed. Um, I mean, depending on where you are in the country, a base salary has gone up five to ten thousand dollars in the last six to twelve months for a for a salesperson. And 
And um, that's not getting you the same quality of rep that you used to get for that that extra money too. Say that yeah. would be short money if it, if you knew you're getting quality. But that's yeah. Not okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a weird world right now. Uh, just have a plan, be flexible, um, but also know that the quality the when it, when somebody like a Hobby Lobby is saying that they're going to pay somebody nineteen dollars an hour as as just a walking in the door rate. Um, you know, things are getting a little crazy. So yeah. you just be conscious of that. And what used to work even six to 12 months ago as, as a sales uh, ad through Indeed or Zip, yeah, it don't fly anymore. It's, it's amazing how fast things are changing right in front of us. You know, you, you said something, Tim, that kind of resonated with me too. You know, before COVID, you would have said everybody had to be in the office. But I think one of the things that we definitely mm-hmm. learned is salespeople, are metric measured, right? You know, it's mm-hmm. how many calls, how many emails, how many conversions, how many conversions become sales, right? Or opportunities, how many quotes then mm-hmm. become sales. Oh yeah. yeah. It makes it really easy to manage a salesperson versus some of the other disciplines from afar, because it, you know, as long as you got a good call accounting on your, uh, on your, you know, your phone system and you've got a way to track emails going out, you know, um, those numbers should be pretty easy to track to see if you're getting production. Yeah. I think the question then becomes, are you finding a human being that can actually manage their day and be effective? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the, it's the hardest thing is to, you know, get the, you know, the prospecting side of a rep going, right. Mm-hmm. Cause it's the least fun part of the job, right. You're talking to a hundred people and 95% of them are going to tell you to go pound sand. So it, it gets old after a while, right? So it's hard to get that motivation going day in and day out. And, and what Timmy and I found, you know, historically was you got to have them on site with you in the cubicle next to you. So you guys can riff back and forth and have that banter and have that fun. Um, you know, so that was like when we always used to say you had to have the rep in the office, it was for that piece of it. Yes. But now with the, you know, teams is getting so good, you can find other ways to, you know, get that banter going back and forth with the gifts and all this, you know, all the other stuff that you do during the day with each other. But that was what we meant by, uh, you know, what, what you have to really be mindful of. It's the yeah. culture building side of it for the prospecting, which can be tough. It is one well, from a, also, just to add to that, from a sales perspective, a lot of times, uh, I mean, we've the three of us have all seen it. A lot of times, if an MSP is a salesperson, they tend to be a department of one, mm-hmm. and they're on an island to begin with. So, to you're on an island in an office to begin with, but then you're home, not really talking to the techs as much because you can't relate to them, and everything gets really weird really quick. Yeah. So it, again, it's just being really conscious of if, if being conscious that you need to be open to that hybrid mentality, but also knowing that you have to get that person in your culture, no matter what. So that's, that's interesting guys. Cause you know, it makes me think back to when I was a, a, a sales rep at first, I worked in a true bullpen environment. We were down in a, a sales office outside of our headquarters. It was 15, and I don't mean this in any way, except it was literally 15 guys and one woman. So it definitely had a locker room kind of mentality yeah. going on. <laughs> it, but the one thing it was, was a supportive environment. Everybody was hearing everybody's calls. And as much as we love to, you know, I mean, give each other a little bit of uh, angst all the time <laughs> when it came to things and trying to be correct about it here. The reality <laughs> is, um, when somebody would take a call and you would see the effort was be putting in and you thought you had them on the hook and you just couldn't reel them in instead of getting your chops busted, usually you got support, dude, thought you really had that one, man, where did, you know, Hey, play it back for me. Where do you think you lost it? You know, that kind of thing. And that that's irreplaceable. So if I'm hearing you guys correctly, you know, you're already there. Why do you exist? Because there are so many single guys on the Island as sales Mm. reps And you provide that peer group, but managers, I think, inside those offices who do tend to talk to their techs all day long because there's always fires to be put out, Mm -hmm. you got to maybe look at how to establish a cadence with a salesperson and prop them up too, right? Because those things can be invaluable. You know, there were plenty of times that I was at the end of my rope making cold calls and just having somebody jump in and go, dude, thought you had them. Man, you know, (laughs) it just made you, okay, I'm not in it alone or I've been there, dude. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's like, I, oh, I tried it. calling him. Yeah, that's a tough knot, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. it, it's true. It's true. Yeah, I, totally. I'll tell you, though, one of the things that Timmy and I have found in this recruiting I, this it's like the pandemic right but it's for recruiting it's just it's big it's once in a century it feels like the the scarcity of reps out there and it's just it's nuts but one of the things that we're really finding out is because reps are controlling the narrative so well now uh for where they're going to go culture the reps are asking about the culture yeah. way sooner in the interview process and if you don't have your culture elevator pitch down when you're uh, talking to this potential rep you're behind the eight ball yeah. right you you yeah. better have a, a clear understanding of your culture and how you can talk to the rep about it uh it's it's big now they, they people want better and they're they're demanding it and they're getting it yep. no yeah it's to that point i mean and i'm sure and granted we don't we don't really venture into the tech world I've, we've had We've had clients tell us similar things on the tech side, but from a sales aspect, I can tell you that we've we've had a couple of salespeople walk away because they didn't feel like it was they didn't feel like it was the right environment for them. Yep. And that I promise you, we have never run into that up until the last couple months, yeah. like ever. It's yeah. just it's just it it's never been a, a serious talking point. Yeah. It's usually a, a bit of a uh, bragging session during the interview process from the owner of the MSP telling the the candidate how great it is and you know how great their company is, how great the office is. Very rarely will the candidate turn around and kind of put the pressure on the owner of the company. And we are see, we really are seeing that more and more now. Which is not that part's not a bad thing. I, I oh, actually, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and the other thing that's differentiating the uh, the owners that are getting reps easier than the others is having a clear path of progression for that rep, a, an understanding and talked about progression for that rep. Back in the day, you could just you know give some kind of gray area type of you know wordsmithing around it. Mm. It needs to be mapped out now for that rep they, they just have so many choices you have to put yourself you know on the table with as many options as you can for that that rep and that's the market yeah. we're in so let's yeah. dig into that a little bit rob if you wouldn't mind um you know i'm a i'm a business owner and i'm interviewing uh mm -hmm. you got you for this job right mm -hmm. and you're going to ask me a little bit about my culture and that might be a new line of questioning an owner has never dealt with before right where they're actually pushing the culture and taking it to the next level and you just talked about kind of laying out what the future looks like, right? You know, the mm -hmm. old, it's got growth potential isn't there. But yeah. let's play back into the fact that so many of these opportunities are in the island of one situation. So, you know, if I'm a business owner and now I'm getting pressed about culture and I'm getting pressed even more so about what's the future going to mm -hmm. hold for me if I come into your business, what realistically should I be prepared to answer? Like, how do I answer that when truthfully deep down in my own bones, the progression path is if you're successful, maybe we can get another one. Well, I mean, it, it, but that's it, that's very true. Right? Of, of course, that's very true. We, you know, us sales reps, we grow by the ROI graph. We just do, you know, mm -hmm. and but what the rep wants to know is if they crush it and they all believe that they're going to crush it. They don't go into an interview, hopefully thinking that they're yeah, going to really yeah. suck at this job yeah, for the yeah, next yeah, you know, three months I'm before they get be fired. So bad at this, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> but they kind of want to know your one year, your three year and your 10 year BHAG. They want to know how like you thought about that as mm -hmm. well. So, you know, going into them and explaining it in three years, we're kind of looking to, you know, you know, gain our company by 50%. We're looking at this market and this market. And right now we're establishing the sales department to grow by you, then a BDR underneath you, and then a dedicated marketing resource after that. And telling them that, you know, helps them understand, okay, this business owner really understands what they're doing. They're not just going to stick me in somewhere and hope for the best. When it, we've, I would say we, we've also, We've got a segment of clients that we've worked, we either work with now or have worked with in the past that uh, a progression can be, hey, they're hunter or salesperson. If you come in and really prove yourself, some of the carrot at the end of the stick is going to be, we're going to let you farm some stuff and make more money for way less uh, difficulty. 
So, and that, uh, that should not be discounted. You know, there's a, a lot of, a lot of MSPs out there. And again, not saying anything like news breaking here, but it, they either have an account manager or they have a salesperson, if they have anything at all. They rarely have both. So um, <clears throat> a transition into some of those warm leads is very attractive for a salesperson that's that's new to a company. Um, and it it the perception is it can be much easier money in the future. So they can grow into that. If you're right. an owner and you go back to that conversation we had earlier about strategy, your strategy should be, when can I let go of the accounts that I'm handling personally? So there yes. is a carrot to actually extend out, right? These, these established customers that have trust and the owner can re remove themselves from some of the day to day and take more of just an oversight position and, you know, executive leadership position. So, yeah, I mean, that's, there's, that's there's, point. It, yeah, I mean, there there is different routes that can be had depending on how that MSP wants to grow their business. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen very successful hunt what you kill and then you're out. I've seen manage your book of business that you bring in. I've mm -hmm. and I've seen that work really well. Mm -hmm. There's like there's okay. different models, and it really depends on the MSP owner's strategy and what they're trying to achieve over the next one three years into their ten year BHAG. But knowing that and being able to articulate that to a rep of what they care about is important now. Culture and understanding the growth map is important to reps. Awesome. All right. So, you know, we're now talking a little bit about the interview. The culture question has been put on the table. Mm -hmm. We're starting to get a feel for it, right? You know, and, and, mm -hmm. and I think the reality is a lot of sales positions are won in that conference room, right? I always say my, you know, the best sale that sometimes a sales rep unfortunately makes is the one to get the job. So I'm that owner that is now <laughs> feeling good, feeling groovy about what's happening on the other side of the table. What are your guys' thoughts about how we can get some truth in lending, right? You know, how do we verify that this person's really got the goods? Because, you know, we can fall in love quick. Yeah, it's, it's easy to, a, a good salesperson should always be able to sell themselves better than anything else, right? So it is, um, I can tell you that, you know, one of, one of the things that, that we've done internally, and I would recommend anybody, whether it's a tech salesperson, doesn't matter, um, make sure you're having some sort of disk assessment or uh, some sort of personality profile to, to learn about how this person communicates, um, there's a, there are a ton of sales assessments out there that, that can really, that really measure quite well, whether somebody is a hunter or a farmer, uh, or, you know, a hunter, cold caller, full sales cycle, or more of an account manager. Uh, if you're going down a salesperson route, make sure that you have one of those, um, that will speak volumes. They, they, it's, nearly impossible to beat any of these tests, right? A lot of them are set up. So if somebody's trying to beat the test, it actually flags it. Um, so having one, having uh, some sort of sales assessment mixed into the recruiting phase, I'd say is pretty important to uh, validate your, your uh, feelings when you're, when you're talking to somebody, somebody that you think could be really good. And on my side, I would say a couple of things. Um, one, they have to have had previous service related big ticket mm. sales right you can't mm. go from the mall kiosk selling phones to selling msp services you can but you're taking a risk so mm. we, whenever we're looking at a candidate we're looking like how can i mitigate my risk of a bad decision mm. so that's what we're trying to do so we we look at how many jobs that they had where it's only one year one year and a half, one year. It, we're looking for, you know, in their near future, they've had one job where they've killed it. Sales, you know, you, you have a lot of misfires in sales, in jobs, right? But they had to have shown somewhere that they really killed it. And that needs to be verified. Yeah. The number one thing that we see wrong all the time is the owner doesn't verify what the rep says, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. They run out of time. They're like, well, you know, he, he really did. He did a great job. I really have a good feeling about this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be different this time. <laughs> it's gonna be, yeah. You know, that's the, that's the number. It's, it's as important as the background check, you know, and the drug screen that you're going to do, but yeah. it's, it's super important. They have to have previous experience selling a big ticket service related item. They have to know how to talk about big money. And if they can't do that, 
then you're taking a risk. You are. Right. If they're going yeah. to buy that Tesla, they'll analyze it for the next three months before hiring and verify they're going to get everything they want out of it. But when it comes to a sales rep, we don't even do the, uh, you know, the employee check ver- verification yeah. check call to make yes. sure yeah. the time's right, yeah. right? You know, you, you kind of hit on a couple things there too, you know, in your uh, points, Rob. One of the bigger ones was where do these people come from, right? They definitely don't come from the mail mall kiosk you know i've definitely seen myself if somebody's had retail sales experience and that's all they've had you almost got to chuck them out because that's the customer coming to them right exactly when you look at technology sales and you see SaaS, um you know software sales too you've got to ask hey what's your mode was it inbound or outbound when you were doing it because many you know many larger SaaS firms they're not hunting for their customers their customers are finding them and it's being transferred to a specialist to do it you know, but let's get outside tech. Let's say you can't find that guy mm-hmm. or girl that's 100% on the money in your marketplace sure. at the rate you're willing to buy today. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some of the other verticals you can choose from? You know, I know at least in one point in time, I used to look at people that were selling intangible goods, meaning selling something that you couldn't hold in your hand that you couldn't yeah. truly feel. Because yes. a lot of what we do is that, right? So your, your insurance agents, your financial planners who are leaving that industry, those kind of people that you really couldn't feel the product. It mm-hmm. was there, you know, you had it, but either it worked for you or it didn't, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, go yeah. on there. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. You know, maybe Tim, start with you. Yeah. So I, I look, we've on average, I would say a salesperson that's in the B2C world doesn't generally translate very well to the MSP space. That said, we, we've we definitely, we manage or have managed people that come specifically from the insurance industries or financial planning. Uh, I think, uh, look, if somebody can be at a place like a, I'll just throw out Northwestern Mutual because I, I worked there for 10 months and it was a dumpster fire, but whatever. If somebody can, if somebody can be at a place like a Northwestern for let's say 18 to 24 months or maybe, or more stands a reason that they're probably a good candidate for a number of reasons. That's a straight commission job, right? If somebody is willing to go straight commission and make it work for 18 to 24 months, they're doing something right. And they probably want more of the stability of the base salary just to be able to to know that they're going to put food on the table next week. Um, So there's definitely there, those can be really good people to talk to based on how long they've been in that industry. Um, Another one that we like to pick on is and not in a bad way, but uh, enterprise rent a car. I was just about to ask about that. (laughs) Technically, (laughs) technically, there's a lot of farming at enterprise, but enterprise does two things extremely well. They've got some of the best sales training year over year ranks top sales training. And depending on where you are and how you rise up in the ranks, there is very much a, a, a hunting side of that. We, we're trying to bring in small and mid, mid-sized businesses that travel often. So it's enterprise is enterprise has always been on our radar. Like if somebody can be at enterprise for your own boss, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's hard. That's a hard one. If you can be there for more than a year and you got promoted from they call it junior or whatever, whatever it is, um, then you know how to do the groundwork in, in your job. If you can make it through copier sales, for more than one year at the same company, you can do the groundwork, right? And, and the ground and pound is the hardest part of this job. It just is. It, it gets hard picking up the phone again and again and again. If you don't have the mindset for it, the phone can start to get to be really heavy. Hmm. So um, any job where somebody has to, where there's a lot of fail and, you know, and they made it through, that's somebody that we take serious. Now, uh, same thing with uh, car sales. If you can stay at the same place and you sold cars for over a year, it's a, worth a conversation to us. You yeah. know, th- there's still a captive audience and it's still a farming type of role, yes, but yes. you you eat or don't eat based on your personality, right? And being able to, you know, uh, keep these people engaged with you. So those types of um, jobs, are we, we take those very seriously and the military. Yeah, well, the military yeah. is a whole different conversation. Yeah. We should do a whole 
episode just on the military and some of the discipline that comes from there and oh, makes yeah. sometimes yeah. a different breed of employee. Um, you know, another place just, you know, to kind of throw out that training and just kind of close out the segment with that, um, ADP too, you know, the payroll. Yep. I mean, you yes, know, ADP is yes. Like a six month training company. Yeah. You're well selling said. an intangible yeah. and there's a whole lot of no when it comes to payroll. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it, like we forgot to mention that one. That's that's right yeah. up to at the top of our list. Yeah, ADP paychecks. Uh, ADP is better known for their training. Paychecks is good as well. Um, both very they tend to be stronger candidates. And it, yeah. it, the 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 good thing about that world in the MSP space is the the sales cycle really kind of mirrors each other. So you know that if somebody's been there for eighteen to twenty four months or, or more. They, uh, you know, they kind of, they dug through the trenches and they came out on the other side and now they're just looking for something else more yeah. times than not. They, yeah. they, they do not let stragglers stay there. Correct. So if you find somebody that has longevity at one of those companies, it's, it's usually worth the conversation. So we're getting near the end of our time here. So let's uh, table this. And I think we, we need to set up an episode for just plans and offers too, right? Because that's mm. that's a big part of it. But maybe we can just close out with when's the right time to step away from a candidate too, right? You know, there's the obvious signs. Guy has no skills. There's no karma. There's no, or no, um, you know, culture mix right away. You're going to back off. But let's say you're going down the road with this prospect you feel good about them, but there's something gnawing at your belly. You know, what, what are some of the things that tell our signs that tell you to walk away from a client or, a, or excuse me, a candidate as well? You first, Timmy. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, look, what, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that I could say to that. Uh, what, what I would, to sum it up, um, if you're, if you're looking for a salesperson, one of the things that I'd recommend is having anywhere from, three to four, maybe even five interviews and, and an assessment somewhere in there as well uh, for the reason that you're, you're asking a lot of redundant questions, right? So if you get that candidate that you kind of have just raising that red flag for whatever reason, you, you want to kind of ask layered questions with uh, layered questions over multiple interviews, but kind of phrase them in different ways. You're, you're looking you're looking for the consistent answers. It's when you ask the same question in different words and the people start giving you different answers. That's when, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty much immediate walk away. Um, I mean, also look, the other, the biggest thing that we run into as far as red flags with the clients that we're dealing with is they just don't think that they'll fit well in their company. And if that's the case, like you, you've got to take a hard look as an MSP owner Again, knowing that a lot of times it's a it's an island of one as a salesperson, can this person mesh with your team? You don't want a tech as a salesperson, but you need somebody who can be outgoing, uh, assertive to the tech team, not back down from them, but not be not be aggressive. Um, all while all at the same time doing their job, right? So it, it's very much about the culture aspect. So if they don't fit your culture, run. Yeah, it's just a bad hire. I, I, I would say here's mine, and I'll give away some of my secret sauce. So I, I ask a bloody nose question. Yeah. And every time, if they fail this question, they're out with me. So we're going to, we're doing the interview. We're three-fourths the way through the interview. It's going well, going well. I, I kind of change it up at that point. And I say, you know, you have, you have a great career. You've done fantastic in your previous job. You know, what you did at ABC company was really commendable. Congratulations. I just don't think that your experience is going to translate here with our company and what we're doing. Um, and then I stop and, and see what they're going to do. If they ask me about my training, uh, they fail. If they say, you know what, I can understand where you're coming from, but when I was back at this company, I didn't know that product either, but I was able to, if, yeah. if they handle the objection in a natural way, I hear where you're coming from, Rob, however, and go back to their resume and refute that objection, they handle the objection, you've got a natural person who knows how to like handle an objection in an appropriate way. So yeah. it doesn't matter what the product is. That's somebody to take yeah. very seriously. I always ask the bloody nose question. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it, just know that 
as an MSP owner, if you're looking to hire that salesperson, they are going to be a different personality than you. You do not want somebody that has your personality, generally speaking, because most MSP owners have a tech background. Just make sure when you're looking for that salesperson that you're, you don't, if you're looking at, you know, just go back to a disk profile. You don't want somebody to be necessarily, um, you don't want somebody to be a high S, high C as a salesperson. Yeah. So just, um, just be conscious of that when you're, when you're talking to candidates. Right. And, and I don't mean to really give them a bloody nose. It's a figure of speech, everybody, <laughs> yeah. just in case yeah. that wasn't yeah. clear. Yeah. You know, I'd like to see some bare but, knuckles in the couch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> John's jumping over the table. Yeah. That's not yeah. good. Well, fellas, we're coming up to the end of our time here. I want to thank you both uh, for being, this is a good one. And it's, you know, so mm. on topic with everything that's going on out there. Um, any closing thoughts before we break away, fellas? I, mean, I, I have just... really none. I mean, I think you guys hit some of the biggest hot buttons that were yeah. out there for people. And I think, you know, hopefully uh, if you're a CEO of an MSP firm and you're listening to this today, you're going to take away some new things you can integrate into your interview process. Yeah. Bare minimum, you got the bloody nose question now. Yeah. That, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Three to five interviews, give them some sort of uh, personality assessment to understand their communication, uh, ask that tough question, uh, mm. and make sure that you do those, you know, the follow up, right? Your background yeah. check and call up and find out about their resume. Um, you know, yeah. you got to do it. The background check is a big one. Make sure you do that. Uh, it Always. is. Always. It is. And that's the one that they never do, right? Because they just run out of time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Kind of like us today with this podcast. We're running out of time here. Oh, uh, out you of know, time. I see what you did there. You see what I did yeah. there? Okay. All right, fellas. Uh, take care. All, All right. the best to you. This podcast will be up on MSPBusinessSchool.com and anywhere that you get your podcast. And once again, as always, fellas, I appreciate it. Take care. YouTube right. too. <laughs> <laughs>